name is Jim Cost. I consider myself to be a photographer. Some people say I'm a mad scientist. Um, I take photos with a process from 1851 called the wet plate collodion process. I was in the camera club back in grade nine, a hundred years ago. Uh, and it's always been a hobby. Before I went to Fanshawe for photography, I did 15 years of medical research, so I've got a chemistry, biology, science-y background. And now that I think about it, most of my medical research always involved some sort of imaging. Um, I've watched more colonoscopies than I would care to comment on. So I've always done some sort of image analysis, right? I joke um, that I used to look at the inside of people, and now I look at the outside of people. And usually, uh, the outside of people looks better. There's a difference, I think, between making a photo and taking a photo. Uh, it takes me about 10 minutes to shoot one image with this process. By the time I set up the model or the sitter under the lights and focus on them, go and pour a plate, it sensitizes for four minutes, come out and shoot it, run back and develop it. Um, it it's really a process that slows you down and makes you think about what you're shooting. If I'm really hustling my butt, I can get six frames an hour. So it kind of takes away that spray and pray, that you might call it, um, and, and makes you sort of concentrate on every single frame. I buy all the chemicals from a chemical supply warehouse and I mix up the, the chemicals into the collodion and the silver nitrate. Everything in this process has been touched by me right from the start. Uh, and I kind of like that. It's, it's nice to know that even though there's been a resurgence with the process around the world, I don't think there's anyone else in London who's doing it. There's a few people in Toronto. They're scattered across the globe, but it's a, you know, if you want it done in the city, you get to come see me. I think of myself as a scientist before I think of myself as an artist. So I would joke that I just push the button. And I do, I try to let my sitter be themselves. I try to do minimal posing. Uh, I let them bring whatever they want to wear. And I'm worried more about the light and the chemistry and the process. And I sort of let the sitter take care of themselves. When you read some of the web pages of people who use the process, um, they call it alchemy, they call it magic, they call it, I don't know, whatever they call it. Um, I think I'm a little more pragmatic. It's chemistry. I joke that there was no Photoshop in 1851. Every one of those streaks and dots and bubbles and whatever, all that crap around the edges of the plate, that's not serendipity, that's not alchemy, that's a dirty plate holder, right? So maybe I'm taking away some of the romance but as a scientist, I see a chemical reaction that's been contaminated. And I know that I could fix that, but it's really the law of diminishing returns. I would have to stop and clean and fix, and it would just disrupt an already slow flow. So I've had to let go of my own OCD and sort of agree to accept some of those artifacts on the plate. Is it art? Is photography art? I mean, you could have that discussion. Um, why a lot of people don't think it is because it's a technical process. And photography's had a real hard time in its history trying to get into an art gallery. To me, it's therapy. I come here um, at the end of a day at work or on the weekends because I enjoy this. It was a hobby, right? So I don't really have a, I don't have a driving passion. I don't get up in the morning and say, you know, if I don't take a photo today, I'm, I'll be unfulfilled or I won't be whole or, I don't think this is any expression of my suffering as a child or any angst. I, I just like doing it. <laughs>160 years. You can go to antique shops and buy tin types that were made in the 1850s and assuming they're made properly and varnished properly, they're eternal. Some of these old cameras I have are over 100 years old. Uh, my digital camera won't last 100 years. It won't last 10 years. Prints fade, digital files get corrupted. These things will last on the mantelpiece theoretically forever. So uh, to me it's a real interesting hard copy and it's a one-off. That plate that comes out of the camera is technically the negative. So there's only one of those. Even if I tried to shoot one right after another to replicate, every pour is different, every development time is different, every pop of the flash is different. So I'll never get two of the same. And like I say, we live in a world where there's a million iPhones and uh, eight frames a second of digital images and they're, everything's disposable. So to me, these things are a little more enduring, I guess, if you will.
One of the ways to ensure that these photos come out looking the same is to do the same thing over and over again. So even if I've only slept three or four hours, um, it's almost um, an automatic process at this point. Uh, same amount of developing, same amount of fixing. So even if I'm zoned out and can't think of what I'm doing, I kind of get into the groove and I can do these repetitive steps to do the processing of the image. That's partly therapeutic for me. Um, it's, I'm very, it's very selfish, I do it for me. <laughs>